So check this out. We finally got around to printing our wedding pictures. We're really happy with the way they come out, came out. And we are actually gonna do a video on what it took to get to these locations and how we did it. But for now, thanks for joining us. I'm Mark. And I'm Tanya. And welcome to the channel. And Well, we're about 20 episodes into our van build and Mark and I just wanted to kind of take a step back and really introduce you to what our, what we're doing this for. What's our end goal? Yeah, so we've been working on the same drawing since we since started this in August. So this has basically been our blueprint up till <laughs> now. We later moved that to something digital, but this week we actually downloaded some van design software and we built out our whole van on it and we want you to see what it's gonna look like. So here it is. So when I went to edit this video, I realized I had deleted somehow all my footage that talked about what tool I actually used to build this design with. So it's now much later. I'm in my PJs. I've had a glass of wine because it's Friday night, but I wanted to go ahead and add that in. So I used a piece of software called Vanspace 3D. There's a few different 3D modeling tools that I've seen van lifers use. SketchUp is a really popular one. Uh, and Vanspace 3D is another really popular one. I actually started, I actually started with SketchUp um, and it was going really well. I just kind of, I thought the learning curve for me was just a little bit too much. So I moved over to Vanspace 3D. Um, now, if I had to do something with an accurate cut list or something like that, I probably would have chosen SketchUp or an AutoCAD sort of thing, something like that. But just to get a high level of what the van is gonna look like when I have all the bits and pieces in, um, Vanspace 3D was fantastic and I'm really glad I used it. So I would highly recommend that tool. So how did we come up with the design? We started our van life journey on our honeymoon when we rented and lived out of a Dodge Caravan for 10 days in the Pacific Northwest. We did actually stay in a hotel every couple of nights, but for most of the trip, we slept in the caravan. We really loved the freedom it gave us, but it also made us realize what we absolutely needed for us to be comfortable in the van. We had a repeat performance last year in Iceland where we spent 10 days in the Happy Camper. The Happy Camper took things to a whole nother level for us because we were actually able to cook in the van. And we had a bed situation that was much better than the caravan, but we still had no bathroom and we realized that that was another huge need for us. So at that point, we were sold on building our own camper and we took the experiences of those two trips to get us moving. The next big consideration we had was what type of van are we gonna buy? And if you've done any research, you know there's three big hitters in the conversion van space. The Ford Transit, the Mercedes Sprinter, and the Ram Pro Master. At the time we were picking out the van, most of the van builds we had seen online were done on Pro Masters and Sprinters. That really isn't the case anymore. As we do more research, we see tons of great transit conversions. But at the time, we narrowed it down right away to the Pro Master and the Sprinter. What did we like about the Sprinter? Pretty much everything. It's a Mercedes which sort of speaks for itself. Great build quality, long lasting, four wheel drive and diesel fuel. We didn't so much mind the premium cost of the Sprinter, we were just really worried about the repairs. You can pretty much find a Dodge Ram dealership in every town, but if a Sprinter should break down in a small town, we'd have to find someone that could work on the Mercedes and can get the parts. That was a little too worrisome for us. So that sort of pushed us away from the Sprinter van. As far as the ProMaster, there were a few things that we really liked. First of all, it seemed to be the widest of the vans and the cargo area was pretty square. 
So we figured it would allow us to sleep east to west and give us more room for a shower and a kitchen. Also, we really like that parts are readily available and that finding repair shops is pretty easy. Another great plus for the Pro Master is that it drives like a van, fits in a standard parking spot, and most importantly, the 2500 fits in our driveway. Anything bigger would have blocked the sidewalk and made it tough for the neighbors to walk by. At first, we also like the fact that the Pro Master is front wheel drive, but seeing that most of the weight is going to be in the back, the water tank and the batteries and electronics, the front wheel drive is probably not so positive. At the end of the day, we felt that the Pro Master best fit our needs and it was a bit easier on the budget, so we went with it. Once we had decided on the Pro Master 2500, we started talking about the high level must haves for the van. Then we started building our design around that and a lot of that was stuff that we had learned from our two previous van rentals. So we highly encourage you to rent a van for a week or so and live in it as your own van. It would be a huge learning experience towards helping you understand your own needs. Our first must have is a comfortable bed. Yeah, in both the vehicles we rented, we probably didn't have the best night's sleep that we could have. We made do with both of them, but we knew for our van, which we'd be spending a lot of time in, we wanted something really comfortable. So we didn't. We actually didn't even mind breaking the bed down and setting it up every night, because it only takes a couple minutes. So this van's gonna have a convertible bed, and it's gonna be just smaller than a queen. I love when my hubby's mm -hmm. beside me. <laughs> okay. Our second must have is a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotta be? <laughs> Private. Yeah, we deliberated on this one for three, maybe four seconds before we decided <laughs> on that, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. so no bathroom out in the open for the prowess. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have either a nature's head composting toilet or an airhead toilet, and it's gonna be behind a closed door for full privacy. So our third must have is a kitchen. Mark loves to cook. He graduated from the Culinary Institute of America. That was his previous career. Mm -hmm. So it was really important that we have enough space for him to cook. Yeah, so we're gonna have a lot of counter space, plus we'll have a two burner induction cooktop. And since it's electric, we did ha have to account for this when we did our electric calculation. So if you actually go back to our last video, you'll see how we accounted for all the electric in the van, especially that because it's the highest uh, drawing piece of equipment we have in the entire van. Um, but it worked out and we'll probably bring a little pizza oven with us as well. One of those little things that runs on propane, just a little mm -hmm. canister to have with us, but yeah. that's it. The kitchen was important and we're gonna do it. So our fourth must have is seating area. We have swivel seats in the front, but we didn't want that to be the only place that we could sit and eat, read, work. Yeah, one thing we realized in the van that we rented last time is we really don't like eating on top of on top of a made bed. So we really <laughs> wanted to have a place where we had we could relax, do some work. Uh, whatever, if we want to watch a movie, we can do it there. So we're actually going to have a bed that converts to a bench. So we'll be able to use it as a bench for workspace during the day and night, probably two or three minutes work and it turns into a really nice bed for us to sleep in. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether or not to have a shower or just all over the place. Some people say it's a waste of space and you can find a place to go take a shower while other van lifers say they can't live without it. But for us, if we're gonna have a private room for the toilet, um, hello, that means a shower. And that was that. So the next, the next item on our list is a roof deck. Now we know that this is not really a need, it's more of a want, but we just think it's super cool that we could actually go up and stargaze, yeah. hang out, it have be, dinner. Yeah, it'd be like Ansel Adams and put, the, put our 
tripods on there and take pictures right from there, right? Yeah. That's what he did. So, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a roof deck that sits between the max air fan and the solar panels. My guess is it'll be about three, four feet long, so not super long, but a nice uh, enough to be able to hang out on it. And it'll be held up by Unistrut rails. We actually don't have those yet. We're trying to find 12 foot segments and it's a little hard to find down here, but we found a source of them and it's gonna, probably this week we'll pick them up and then next week we'll do a video on how to do the roof rails. The next must have is good ventilation. We love to sleep with a fan on and I typically run really warm when I sleep. So it's really important that the room temperature is cool. Yeah, so we knew this was gonna be important in the van as well. So we've put in a bunch of windows that open. Um, plus we're gonna have a max air fan right above the bed, a max, uh, max fan 7500. And we're gonna put a Frisair AC unit in the front. So we had actually toyed with the idea of putting in a portable AC unit. The problem is we have to lug the thing around. It's got to be vented through a window and it seemed like it was going to be just a ton of effort. So we're going to go ahead and put that thing. It'll be installed actually in our next video. Yeah. So we were hoping to start it today, but it's back to winter. It's 30 degrees out. So we'll be doing it this week and just stay tuned and you'll see it. Last but not least is a good internet connection. With Mark's shop, it's really important that he's able to connect to the computer and the phone. Yeah, now the truth is we live on the East Coast, so pretty much the whole Eastern Seaboard is covered by some cell tower somewhere. But just to be safe, we're gonna put in a booster antenna so we make sure we have a solid connection wherever we happen to be. <laughs> so this was my kind of video. I stay back there and push the record button and drink coffee. And this beautiful lady does all the work. Mm. I love it. We make a good team. Well, I mean, it takes somebody really intelligent to push the button. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, we really hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to follow along on our entire van build mm -hmm. process. Uh, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. We've heard from so many of you and given us some great ideas. And Billy, if you're out there watching, thanks for all the wonderful tips on these videos. We've appreciated it. It's yes. really helped us yes, uh, as we've you. produced them. So anyway, we will see you guys next time. We're going to put in the Frisair AC unit. We're going to fix the shore power adapter. I, I mean, we're going to put a second one in the right place after somebody messed up. Um, but stay with us and we'll be going through that. Then we're going to get to the ceiling, the floor, and this place is going to start looking like an actual home. So stick around and we'll see you soon. Bye.